sand, water, sun. The whole universe is made of atoms. Even children are made of atoms. At least that's what you believe, and it's surely what you learned in school. We're taught in school that all the universe is made out of atoms, but it turns out that's just the start of the story. There's a whole much bigger universe out there to explore, which is made up of completely different material, stuff that we haven't encountered before, and we're trying to find out what that is. Today, science is struggling with a mystery that calls into question our certainties. There's now something else in the cosmos, a reality we're only just beginning to glimpse. Most of the universe is made out of stuff that we have not yet figured out. You know, 95 percent of the universe um, we still have to explore. In fact, atoms only account for 5 percent of matter in the universe. The rest is still totally unknown to us. We know what it isn't, but we don't know what it is. Dark matter isn't supernatural, but its mysterious behaviour certainly brings that idea to mind. In fact, some people call it the ghost matter, because it's this invisible, ethereal substance is all around us, but it just doesn't interact with us at all. It's almost as if it has its own parallel existence all around us. Across the globe, scientists have embarked on a crazy race, chasing dark matter in the sky, underground, and in outer space. But for now, the more advanced equipment and experiments become, the more they reveal the extent of our ignorance. What is dark matter? I don't know what, if I knew what dark matter were, uh... Is the stuff which fills my dream and doesn't make me sleep at night. We are at the beginning of a real scientific revolution right now. It's a huge revolution. It's on the scale of the Copernican revolution. Finding a particle of dark matter would just be fantastic. It would solve what is the biggest question at the moment in science. What is the universe made of? astrophysicists so convinced of the existence of this mysterious invisible matter. Because without dark matter, the universe wouldn't be the way it is. There wouldn't be enough gravity for stars and galaxies to rotate at the speed we observe. It turns out there's just not enough stars there. They don't have enough gravity to hold the Milky Way together. Now it's fortunate for us that there's extra dark matter in the Milky Way. That provides an extra force and keeps the whole Milky Way together. It's fortunate for us because if there weren't any dark matter in the Milky Way, there wouldn't be enough force. We couldn't hold the Milky Way together and all the stars would fly off into the cosmos. This story began in the 1930s but the question wasn't truly asked until the 1970s by the American Vera Rubin. A young mother of three children, Vera chose to specialize in a field where competition from male colleagues wasn't too fierce. Rather than observing black holes, she turned her interest to the stars of the Andromeda Galaxy. Sir Isaac Newton taught us that in our solar system, the farther away a planet is from the sun, the more slowly it turns. Vera therefore expected the speed of the stars in the Andromeda galaxy to follow this same decreasing curve. But that wasn't what she observed. The speed 